Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome to part two of working with Dynamics 365 field service mobile application, the Power Apps version. Uh, this one is our configuring the application. In the first video we talked about, you know, how you set it up and kind of move around it a little bit. Now, because it's really based off of Power Apps, it's a little bit different configuration methodology than what we've done in the past. The good news is if you know Power Apps, it's, it's really not all that different from configuring a mobile application. So let's go ahead and take a look at how you would configure this using some of the Power Apps interfaces. So before we go in and look at what configuration looks like, let's just real quick do a quick refresher on some of the different elements of the mobile application. So in here I can see the home screen that kind of brings me in and shows me at this point just some of the different bookings that I have available. If I come in and I click on my and I expand the menu, these are all the different options that I have from a application navigation standpoint. I can see that I have my work listed here, I have customers, I have assets, I have time reporting. These are all just different elements that I can use to reference the different information that I want to work with. If I come in here and select bookings, this shows me all the different bookings that I have inside the application that have been assigned to me that I could go ahead and work with. As I expand into a booking, now I can start to see general information related to that booking. So I can see I have a general tab that tells me information about the booking status. It tells me when it's scheduled to start. It tells me actual arrival. Some of that, uh, some of that information that's important to have as you're working with it. As I expand into customer, now I have actual organizational details related to the customer. I can see service count, I can scroll in and see mile duration based upon how we're navigating to it. If the map had been enabled for this organization, I could see mapping functionality, but I can also see service-based information. So what tasks have been associated with this work order based upon the incident type that was assigned to it? Are there any products that I'm trying to install based upon this, any services? And I can see notes, which is where I can go in and do things like you know add voice recordings but I also have the ability to do things like capture a customer signature so this is kind of what the the interface is going to look like as users go out and start to experiment with it well how would we configure this from an application standpoint so as I mentioned kind of at the top of the video if you're familiar with working with power apps So you can see in here when I go into the application that I have those, those four key headers that we saw. I have the my work, the customers, the assets, and the time reporting, all of that information that correlated with what I was working with inside the application. So if I were to come back and just kind of look at this from a mobility perspective, I really have all that same information. So here's the my work with the bookings, the customers with the accounts and the contacts, the assets and the time reporting. So if I wanted to add something to this that I could potentially use and reflect that inside the mobile app, I'm gonna just go ahead and use these same similar sitemap components that I would work for. I already have my groups in here, so I'm not necessarily adding another group. Maybe I just want to put something in based upon work or items that have been assigned to me. So over here where I have my components area, this is where I can start to bring in either maybe create a new area that might be navigatable through the application, but this is where I could go ahead and just simply drag a sub area over, select the area that I want to put it into. So for example, maybe my work, go to components, drag the sub area over and maybe all I want to do in this instance is just have cases so I can go to entity now I could come over here select case now once I save and publish this or save and close this now that case entity will show up in the navigation of the application underneath the my work so this is a great way that if you're trying to kind of customize the the overall aspect of how people will navigate through those different items using the sitemap is a great way that you can go ahead and do that based upon what you need to do once I'm in there if I come back to the application, I have some key elements that are visible for me that allow me to work with items. One of the items that I have in here is I have my field service dashboard, which gives me access to be able to administrate some of the key elements of the application. I have business process flows that are related to field service. So right now I have my connected field service IoT process, and I also have kind of the standard work order business process. So these are kind of the out of the box processes that ship with the application. Now, depending upon with the entities, 
each of these entities will have different elements in here that I can work with. So I can see from an account standpoint that they've limited the number of forms, views, and charts that are available. I have an account mobile form that represents kind of a mobile version of the account form. And then I also have a quick create form on the account record. If I scroll down, kind of the big ones that you see from within the context of field service is when we start talking about work orders. And so you'll notice here that there are four very specific forms that you'll see. You have the work order customer form, the work order mobile form, the work order notes, and the work order service form. These are important forms to recognize or to understand because you're going to do a lot when it comes to the context of customizing. So if you did create some additional forms or if you just wanted to kind of get an idea for what specific elements are in here, this is a good way to kind of dive in and see what forms have been set up inside the application based upon the items that, that are working in there. So also you'll see that from, from even kind of a bookable resource booking perspective. I can look at my bookable resource bookings and see that there is a specific form that is mobile optimized for the booking and the work order. So if you're getting ready to modify some of this information, it's not a bad idea to come into the app itself and just really see kind of which ones of the, or what versions of forms have been added to the mobile app. So how might I go through the process of, of customizing this? So again, because it's a model-driven app, I'm gonna use the make.powerapps.com app maker portal. So if I come into here, I'll have access to all the relevant information that I would need based upon the organization or the environment that I'm working in. From here, I can go ahead and go over into data and have access to all my entities. So again, if you remember when we went through the mobile application and we saw some of the different mobile forms that were enabled from a book, bookable resource booking standpoint, as well from a work order standpoint, I can come in here and if I wanted to do a search for, for example, work order, I'll just switch this to all, do a quick search for work order, open this up, and now I can see when I click on the forms themselves that I have those forms that we saw. I have the work order mobile form, I have the customer form, the notes form, and the service form. So this is where if I wanted to go in and make something that was kind of specific in changes to the customer-based information, I could open this up. And this is where now using kind of my standard form practices. So now I can go into here and I can take the fields that I would have if there's a specific field that I want to drag into this. I can grab some of that information, move the field over, use the same form customization techniques that I would use on any other situation based upon these items. So come into here and kind of define what those uh, individual elements look like that you want to work through. Maybe there's some other items that you want to go where you want to use some of the, the components. I could add things like sliders and associate them to specific elements. Really anything that you might be looking at from a context of a power platform, if it's a component or a control that you can bring into the mobile form normally or to a model-driven app form normally, you can bring it in from here. If I back out of here and I go into, for example, like the services version of the form and I click on service, now you'll see that this one has a lot of different kind of subgrid based information that's associated with it. So in here I have subgrids for, I have information for service tasks, I have the related products, I have the related services, I have information that ties it back to the work order. So think about in here if there was maybe some custom information that you brought in and you wanted to add in regards to a subgrid, I could use the same subgrid functionality over here by just clicking on subgrid and bringing that item in from here. Or I might look at if I didn't want to have a bunch of individual subgrids that were maintained, maybe I wanted to use things like quick view forms, I could set up some different quick view forms and I could push some of these stuff over into over into some of the other mobile applications. So what you really want to look at is depending upon the entity that you are trying to customize, where are those forms? So from an account, you'd want to go into the account mobile form. From a bookable resource booking, you'd want to go into the bookable resource or booking and work order form and make those necessary changes. Once you save and publish, all of those items will be available for you to work with.
If you've ever used previous versions of the field service mobile application, one of the key appeals that you're aware of is the whole concept of being able to take the information offline. So if I'm, you know, out in the field or I'm, you know, down in the basement of somewhere or whatever that situation is, I can actually take that data offline and work with it. And so when we started to kind of talk about how we're going to build this new mobile experience, we really needed to address how are we going to handle mobile offline synchronization. And so one of the ways that you can do, or, so to do that, you actually have to kind of configure it. So if you go into your make.power apps and you go into your CDS entities for the environment that you're in, one of the areas that you'll see is the ability to first and foremost enable any of the entities that you want to take offline for offline access. So for example, if I'm going to take this offline, I'd probably want to be able to take the booking offline. I'd want to be able to take the work order offline. So I'm going to come into the data and the entities, select the entity, which in this case is going to be work order. I'm going to come over here to settings. And then underneath more settings, there's an offline option. So in here, I can go ahead and choose to enable for mobile offline. This will go ahead and configure and set the work order up. Once I save and publish it, then it'll be able to be added to any of my offline capabilities. But I would want to do this for any entity that is really a part of that mobile application. So like bookable resource bookings, service tasks, if I'm going out and setting up you know, products, any of those kind of core field service mobile um, items, I want to make sure are enabled to be able to be taken offline. Otherwise, technicians who are out working in the field won't have them. And by default, they likely won't be. So go into your bookable resource bookings, go into all, you know, any of the items that are basically in that menu and, and set that up. Once you have done that, now you can enable mobile offline for the environment that you're working with. Now, this is going to be back in the admin center. So this is where you're going to go to admin.powerplatform.microsoft.com, and you're going to go into your list of environments. So in this case, I have an environment that I've set up here called my field service base install. I'm going to go ahead and go into settings. And so they just recently added mobile or offline mobile profiles to users and permissions. So this is kind of your security area. So if you want to do any mobile configuration where you can configure it offline, you'll go ahead and click on mobile configuration. And now it's going to allow you to create kind of a mobile profile. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can do this, but in essence, what you're going to do is you're going to click on profile, give this a name. So I might call this sample mobile. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit create. And now I can open this up and I can start modifying stuff. So the first thing that you have to think about is, are there going to be entities that really need to be taken offline? So as I come over into the data available offline, now I have the ability to define what specific entities I want to bring in. So as I come into add entity, I can come in and I can pick and choose, okay, I want to bring, you know, account offline or offline. I want to bring contact offline. And maybe, you know, just for today's purposes, I also want to bring work order. Obviously, if I was setting this up to be a scenario where I was really going to take everything that I really needed from an application standpoint offline, there would be a lot more entities in here. But for purposes of demonstration, it kind of gives you the idea to, to be able to see that. Now I'm going to come down and I have to determine what records I want to make offline. So currently you have a few different options. You can take organization records and you can take organization records based upon ownership. So I can take my user records offline. I can take records that belong to areas where are members that I'm a team of, and I can bring business unit records offline. So if there are any records owned by anybody who's in the same business unit, any records that are owned by anybody who's in the same team or my records, or, and I can do kind of a hybrid combination. I can have all of them selected, or I can just kind of pick and choose which individual records I want. I also can bring just all records if I want. I can bring only related records. So if there are only records related to items that I'm working with, I can do that. Eventually you will have the option to kind of create custom items based upon what you want to work with. But at this point, we're going to go ahead and do user records. And then you can start defining the individual relationships that you want based upon those items. Now, I already have one of these that's already kind of been created here a little bit. So I'm gonna just go back into a kind of a pre-existing profile here. 
This one now shows you a lot more around the items that we have. So I have priority, I have customer asset, I have incident types. A lot, this was actually pre-created when I enabled the mobile application and turned some of the kind of the functionality on for the environment itself. In here, I can see I have the work order, the work order incident. These would be the key elements that I would want to have when I'm coming offline. As I come into here and I edit this particular item, this is where I can now start to see what specific relationship information I might want to bring in. So not only can I bring in my user records, but this is where I could also bring in related records. And I could define that field that maps that related records into the application. So you really want to kind of go through this and spend the time to define, here's the information and to the degree that that information should be brought over. You also need to make sure that anybody who will be taking this mobile application offline has access to do so. So I can do that by coming in, just adding people, find the name of the person that you wanna work with, adding that person to have mobile offline access, and then I can hit save. And now that person is available to start taking the app offline. I still have to enable the app in order for it to be used offline. So at this point, I'm gonna go back into my make.powerapps uh, app maker portal. I'm gonna find the field service mobile application because I need to enable it for, for offline. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit it. And then on the properties page of the mobile or of the mobile application, there's just different settings. This is where if I wanted to come in and you know, like, you know, customize the application, but one of the options that I see in here is enable for mobile offline. So in here, this is where I can specify what specific profile I want to utilize. In this case, when I turned it on and when I set up the application and I enabled it um, and, and chose to have the, you know, the field service mobile application, it set up the profile information for me. It already set up that field service mobile app. But if I had a specific item I wanted to work with, I could go ahead and just turn that on from here. Once I save and publish this, now you're able to use the application working in offline mode. So that's going to do it for our very brief look at what you can do from a configuration standpoint with the new Dynamics 365 field service mobile application. You know, go out there and explore and just see some of the different elements. Obviously, with all the advances that are coming from a power platform standpoint, there are a lot of different options that you can use to really kind of take this mobile application, build it and tailor it and make it really your own. For all of us here at 365.training, this is Derek saying take care, everybody. I appreciate it and have a good one.